Hello, and today we're going to be talking about determining if function if uh, a set of data is a function. Let's try that again. Hello, and today we are going to talk about if relations are functions and if an equation is linear. So pause the video and try these two problems out right now. Come back when you're done. All right, so first thing we're going to do is find our slope. So we're going to go 4 minus 3 over 6 minus 3, which gives me a slope of 1 over 3. So I know my equation that we're trying to find is y equals mx plus b. And so for this, I know I'll start with y equals 1 third x plus b. Next, what we're going to have to do is plug in a point. I'm going to use 6 comma 4. So 4 is my y value. 6 is my x value. And I'll solve and get b is 2. So the equation of this one is y equals 1 third x plus 2. Kind of crammed in there, but we understand what's going on. For the second one, same process. We're going to first find the slope. I'll use this point first just to show you that the difference doesn't matter. We'll go 2 minus a negative 9 over negative 4 minus 7, which will give me 11 over negative 11, or slope of negative 1. So I can write my equation as y equals negative x plus b. And then I will plug a point in. So we'll put negative 9 in for uh, y and 7 in for x. Remember, it's important that these two values come from the exact same coordinate. And this gives me negative 2 equals b. So my equation is y equals negative x minus 2. Okay, so what is something, what does it mean for something to be a function? If we want something to be a function, uh, we want it to have essentially no input, no input has two outputs. No input has two outputs. So we're saying if we have an input, it will produce a unique output. Another way to say this is that no x value can repeat. No x value can repeat. So no input can have more than one output. It has to have a unique output. And we also know that no x value can repeat. So let's look at these two relations, right? Both of these are a relation because we're given a relationship between our x and our y value. If we look, 2, negative 3, 4, uh, negative 8 and 7, none of these numbers repeat. So this is a function. You may notice that the y value of 6 repeats. That's okay, right? We're allowed to have y values repeat. We can't have an x value repeat. The most, one of our more famous ones we have is uh, a parabola, right? And that is a function, uh, and it has a y value to repeat all over the place, right? A ton of them. For the second one, if we look, negative 1, 6, 7, oh, negative 1 again. Because we have the negative 1 repeat, this is just a relation. Okay, this is just a relation. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is domain and range. Domain are all of our input values. All of our input or our x values, right? Really, domain is dealing with all independent variable values that we have. We always want to write it in ascending order. So we're going to write the smallest first. So I'm going to do a little squiggle bracket so we know it's not a coordinate. So it goes negative 8, because that's the farthest left, then negative 7, then negative 3, then 2, then 4. For our range, we write the exact same thing, but now we're dealing with our outputs, or our y values. So negative 5 is the most left, the smallest value we could have. And then 6 occurs twice. However, even though 6 occurs twice, we only write it once. So we write that 6, and then we go uh, 9, and then 11. We do not rewrite range, val range or input, or range or domain values. If they occur twice, we only write them once. Make sure we have that written down. That's an important thing for us to know. 
for the domain for the other one, we'll write negative 7 first. And then we go to negative 1, and then 6, and then 7. Again, we're not rewriting that negative 1, even though it appears twice. For the range, we get negative 5, negative 1, 3, 4, and 16. All right. So here are, I'm going to move this one up for you guys, just so anyone maybe not watching at home can see it. Um, or watching from home can see it. If we look, there are these three different values, or these three different problems. One, two, and three. Right? We don't have to have our data in just a table. It also could be a set of ordered points. I want you to pause the video, find the domain and range, and also tell me which ones are relations and which ones are functions. So pause the video here. Okay, for our first one, we will get that this is going to be a function because we have no x values to repeat. For the second one, we have a 2 repeats itself, and so this is just a relation. The 7 repeats itself, but again, that doesn't matter because the 7 is a y value. And then for the third one, we have the 1 repeat itself, and so this is also a relation. I'm going to do the domain of just the first one, but you guys can check from there and make sure you're understanding what's going on. So we get negative 6, negative 1, 2, 4, and 10. And then for the range, it'd be negative 5, negative 3, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so another thing we want to talk about, a way for us to determine if functions are um, actually functions, is by looking at the graph. We have something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test says if you are able to pass a vertical line and you will hit more than one point on the graph, it is not a function, it's just a relation. So for example, this one on the left, if we drag our vertical line through the uh, as much of the graph as we can see right now, because no x value repeats, we're not gonna see it hit more than one point at one time. So this would be a function. For the second one, this is also a function. This one also happens to be a, a line, and we know that there's a difference between a function and a linear function, but it's good for us to understand that it, it will still be a function. And this last one, oh no, look at all these different points that it hits. This one is a relation. It's a relation because once we draw this vertical line, it will hit more than one point all over the place. Okay, so we know that that is not going to be a function once a relation. Why don't you pause the video real quick and see if you can tell using the vertical line test if these top three graphs, if, if any of them are functions and so which ones are. Okay, so for this first one, we can see this is definitely not a function, right? Just for the reason the other circle wasn't. If we look at the next one, oh no, look at all these places it's hitting, right? This means, let, let me give you a good example of what this is talking about without drawing another line. If we were to look at, uh, let's say, 6, with an input of 6, this is going to hit the point 6, 6. It will also hit the point 6, negative 8. So as we've seen, we're having this input of 6 it goes to 6 or negative 8. And again, we don't know, right? That's not helpful because we need a function to give one input giving a unique output. And so that's why this one is not a function. For this third one, it starts out being a function, and it's OK. And then as soon as we get here, this shows us that it's no longer a function, right? Because we have that overlap. Pause the video and try these three out and see if you can tell me if these are functions. Okay, so for this first one, still a function, still a function, still a function. Yeah, all across it's a function. All of our points work. For the next one, 
for the next one, we'll see, even though this looks weird, this definitely is a function, right? This is what's called a, a trig graph, probably a sine or cosine graph, right? But this is still a function. Here, function, 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 still a function. Oh no, that last point is what set us off. This is not going to be a function. All right, we already did some practice on direct variation in a previous video, but I wanted to hit it back here just to make sure everyone feels comfortable with it. So we talked about direct variation being y equals kx. This also means that we can find the constant of proportionality, the constant of proportionality being that k value, k equals y divided by x. We can do that here just by solving by k, which means I divide out by x each side and get y over x equals k. So I want to check to see if the constant of proportionality is the same for each one. The only problem is we can't use 0, 0, because 0 over 0 is undefined, right? So we have to check for all other ones. So 6 over 3, that's good. That's 2. 20 over 10, still 2. And the last one, 24 over 12. That's good. That's still 2. So yes, this is a direct variation. We know the constant of proportionality, k equals two here. For this first one, we get negative eight over negative 12, which gets us what, two thirds? For the second one, we get two over three, which hey, guess what, two thirds. For this third one, I'll pop that up here, we get four over six, which is also two thirds. And then finally, we get four thirds over two, which simplifies down to two thirds. So yes, this is also a direct variation because all of the values simplified to the exact same ratio. So we'd say yes, and the constant proportionality in this case is two thirds. So let's go back to our equation y equals kx. We know that that means there can be no, or the b value like we normally see in y equals mx plus b, the b value here has to be zero, right? Meaning that we're not adding any value to this equation. We just get y equals kx. So we want there to only be a relationship between x and y. Meaning if I put in x, I should be able to multiply by something and get out y. For example, working $10 an hour. Meaning if I'm looking at my total amount that I have at the end of the month, this is going to be a direct variation. However many dollars I have is based on how many hours I work. For the second one, saving $400 a month when you already have, this should say a thousand, when you already have a thousand in the bank, this is a no. The reason why is because you already start with a thousand. If we want to look at your savings, your savings would be equal to 400 times the amount of months plus that initial $1,000. This initial 1,000 is what makes this not a direct variation. Let's look at the next one. You save two gigabytes of data a month and you already have 7.3 rollover. No, we could rewrite this as saying the amount of data you have, data is equal to two per month plus the 7.3. That's why this one's a no. For the next one, paying rent $700 a month. Yeah, the cost is always gonna be that $700. And the last one, earning 6% interest, yes. We don't see any type of additional uh, info or additional cost that we have, so it's just that 6% per month. All right. So what does it mean to be linear? So what it means to be linear is uh, we have to have our function have x to the first, so a lot of times we'll see this, and then it can have a constant at the end. So we want x to the first, and we need x in the numerator. Common linear uh, terms will be y equals, or linear equations would be y equals mx plus b, y equals kx, ax plus by equals c, or uh, if you wanna get real fancy, y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one. Right, a lot of different ways you could write it. 
But really, all of these have in common is they have that x to the first, x to the first, x to the first. Really, if we solve for y and we get something along these lines, right, either one of these, we know we're going to have a linear function. We could also graph it, but a lot of times that's not helpful if we don't know what we're looking for. All right, so for this first one, we're going to solve for y. Now, it's already in standard form which is this form right here, but we wanna just essentially solidify that we're okay with it. So I would subtract three X from both sides and add 11, and then I would divide by five on both sides. So Y equals negative three fifths X plus 11 over five. Now is X to the first power? Yeah, if we don't have an exponent for our X, we automatically assume um, that it's going to be to the first power. Uh, if we look at the, is it in the numerator? Yes, it's not in the denominator. We don't see a division bar over it. So this first one is a linear function. For this second one, now these are two linear functions multiplied together. And what would end up happening is we'd actually get a quadratic if we multiply those together. Now I don't expect you to be able to do that yet and we'll work on how to do that, but we get y equals six x squared minus five, and then we'd have what, minus 13 X. So because we see this X squared, this is not linear. For the third one, the first thing we'd wanna do is distribute this two thirds and get Y minus seven equals two thirds X minus eight thirds. And then we'd add seven to both sides which gives us y equals two thirds x, and then plus, what would that be? 13 thirds. So yeah, x is to the first power, and it's in the numerator, this is a yes. So we'd have yes, no, yes. And for this final one, we write it as y equals three over x plus four. Oh no, see this x? It's in the denominator. So that one's a no, the last one's not linear. All right, uh, this is all I have for determining functions in linear. There'll be practice on the wiki or in the canvas. There'll also be the handout accompanying with this. If you have any questions or want any additional resources on any of this, just let me know guys and I will get you all the